Here is a number line from one to a million. Where would you put a thousand? Well, it is true that the difference between a million and a thousand is much bigger than the difference between a thousand and one. But in some sense, a thousand feels like it belongs somewhere near the middle. Imagine you had one thing, and then you had ten more things. That feels like a big jump. But say you had fifty gazillion things, and then you had ten more things. That feels like a pretty small jump. The same thing applies to our number line, just less extreme. Is there a way we can capture this feeling with math? The answer is yes. Instead of your number line adding for each step, you can make your number line multiply. We can pick the multiply by any number, but let's just use ten. Then a thousand is exactly in the middle. This is called a logarithmic scale. Let's try to better understand how this counting system works. It turns out that exponentials belong here. The base tells you what you're multiplying by, and the exponent tells you how many steps you should take. Them put together represents where you end. Roots also belong here. The small number represents the number of steps, and the big one represents where you end. Them put together represents the way you're counting, but remember, in a timesy sort of way, not an addy sort of way. It feels like five, although it takes some time to get used to. Five is also like going one third of the way to 125. This is why 125 to the third power is the same as the cube root of 125. 125 to the two thirds is just two thirds of the way, which is also the cube root of 125 all squared. But I prefer writing it with an exponent since it's more descriptive, telling me exactly what it represents. Okay, so where's the logarithm? Say we know what we are counting by and where we end, but we don't know the steps. In a system that counts in a times three sort of way. What is 81? First, I imagine the line of times threes. Then figure out where 81 is. It's one, two, three, three steps away. So the whole thing represents three. In a system that counts in a times two sort of way, what is a quarter? On a line of times twos, a quarter. Well, this time we have to go backwards. Backwards one step, backwards two steps. Six, four, of 32. That's one, two, and a half. Anyways, these are called logarithms. But these aren't something totally new, because everything is each other except shuffled. Okay, so here's something interesting: log base four of sixty-four, or the way to sixty-four in a times four-ish sort of way. We can split sixty-four into sixteen times four. The total number of steps is also the number of steps needed to travel by times sixteen, added with the total number of steps needed to travel by times four, in a times four sort of way. We sort of translate a multiplication into addition. Take log base two of sixteen. We can also think of sixteen as four squared, or two jumps of size four, making the total number of steps two times the amount of steps it takes to move, but four when counting in a times two sort of way. We turned exponentiation into multiplication. How about this? What is log base eight of two? In a times eight sort of way, where is two? Somewhere between zero and one. We can think of log base two of eight. In a times two sort of way, eight is one, two, three steps. So two is one third of the way to eight. But this is actually always true, no matter which number you choose to multiply by. If we pick different numbers, we end up stretching or squishing the number line. So in a times eight sort of way, two is a third of a step. So swap the two numbers, then put the answer under one, you get the original. What about log base four of one hundred twenty-eight? Here's one way to think about it. We know log base two of 128. That's seven. So how many steps of times two are in one step of times four? That's two, or more abstractly, log base two of four. So log base four of 128 is log base two of 128 divided by log base two of four, which is 3.5. This is a very useful idea. Since if we know log values when counting in one way, we know log values when counting in any way. And that's all I have to say. I hope that if you work with algorithms, you'll be able to see them in your head.